Hello friends, welcome back to the channel, welcome back to Meshi TV. I'm so glad that you are here. And in today's video, we are going to be doing your 2022 reading, but we're going to be doing it a little bit differently. So instead of doing your standard pick a pile, pick a card reading, I thought that it would be actually really nice if we've done one generalized reading. If first of all, if you were drawn to this video, then the message will probably be for you. But I thought that it would be a really nice way to kind of look at each section of your life and kind of unpack that as you will and see sort of what are some of the messages and predictions that are sort of coming your way in the new year before we, before we dive into 2022 ultimately. So here's how it's going to work. We're going to be looking at as pile number one, we're going to look at your career and your personal development and just really personally, what are you really diving into? In pile number two, we're gonna be really diving into your love life and your relationships in all areas of your life. And then the last one, the last pile, we're gonna be looking at the overall arching direction that you're going to be taking in 2022 and what it is that you're manifesting and what it is that, how can you realign in certain areas so that you can sort of catapult your manifestation powers. So if that sounds good, then stay tuned. Let's dive right in. Um, I will leave links. I mean, I will leave a full timestamp in the description. So if there's only a specific area that you really wanted to get more clarity on, you absolutely have the ability to do so. Um, I do have three crystals, so I will show you guys a real close up of the crystals and that's it. That's it. Um, if you are brand new here, consider subscribing if you haven't already. We chat at least, we have changed our schedule, so we chat at least one to two times a week here on this channel, and we talk about the law of attraction, manifestation, and how you can really use these beautiful spiritual tools in the most tangible way that you can apply them in everyday life, essentially. So if that sounds good, you would probably really, really enjoy it here. Okay, let's dive right in, first of all. So let's take a look at pile number one, which is gonna be your career and your and your personal development, what's happening there. Okay, so first and foremost, let's talk about your crystal. Your crystal is sort of a mix between uh, clear quartz and we have some obsidian. Obsidian? I feel like it's obsidian. I will pop the name of this crystal um, in on the screen for you, but the but the idea behind this crystal is really to get grounded and to transmute. So I feel like you guys are going to be, especially within your career, you're going to be working on creating some boundaries. You're going to be really working on getting rooted while you're shining your light, while you're tapping into your own inner power. Okay, and let's unpack, see sort of what's coming up for you. So first and foremost, I wanted to kind of take a look at what you're going to be leaving behind and what you're leaving behind in 2021 is all about movement all about that momentum I feel like a lot of you have created some really beautiful momentum for the year some lots of lots of doing lots of moving moving things around lots of energy shifts um, and I think that right now you're pretty much done with that I feel like you're really moving out of that out of that energy and really getting grounded into what is coming in in the present moment and what is coming in the present moment is the stillness it's sort of like that what are you with the death card i feel like this is all about what is really shedding right like what is here right now it's sort of that form of transformation when you moved so much that you're kind of realizing what is no longer what is no longer needed? It's sort of like when you when you come back home from a long trip and then you kind of open up your suitcase and you realize like how much extra things you were really carrying around that was really weighing your backpack down, which ultimately slowed you down as well. And I feel like this is what that realization, perhaps this little bit of a break during the holiday season has allowed you to really tap into that where you can really take a look at, okay, in, in my own journey, what is what is really ready to stay behind and what is really shedding, right? What is part of me that is no longer really 
that that version of me that I'm embodying. So these are some of the questions that you can kind of contemplate because I feel like, especially with the death card, it always kind of reminds us of sort of what is no longer needed. You know what I mean? Like to me, this is death card is always about transformation, but I think it also takes a moment, especially if you're watching this before 2022, take some time to really reflect on within your job, within your career, what was the version of you that was really showing up that is no longer the version of you that wants to show up anymore and really take time to reflect. And to me, when people are talking about reflection, I feel like the way that it gets portrayed um, in social media, especially is just let's celebrate the wins and like, look at me crushing it. And I feel like if for those of us that don't measure up to that, it can feel like we're somehow falling short. And what I feel like with this death card is actually see what is ready to be transformed, right? Where it's not just seeing what's ready to be transformed, but like that in itself, you sitting down and taking time to reflect and taking stock of what was working within your, within your work, within the way that you contribute to the world and what is not working is the work in itself. You know what I mean? Like it takes a level of awareness for you to really realize that, oh, hey, like that's actually like not working for me anymore. So take some time and, and dive into that a little bit further because I think that that's going to be the key for you to moving forward. And what is actually coming in for you is if you do this work, you're going to find that inner peace because I think that what's actually shedding, it's, it's creating a lot of friction and agitation, right? I think that, it can create a lot of friction and agitation because you just feel like it's, it's just not in alignment, right? And ultimately what we are striving for is to invite more of the peace, more of the serenity in. And what is sort of here to kind of help you with that or why this is kind of coming in is because you need you need to kind of mourn those aspects of yourself to, to really help you with it, but also that's sort of part of letting things go. I think that right now in this present moment, this is sort of the part that is probably going to be the not so fun part, but it's also an absolutely necessary part for your transformation. Whether we're looking at your personal development, if you're looking at your soul's journey of really like what is really happening and why is it no longer in alignment? So really getting clear on that is going to be key. Now let's take a look at how or what can actually help with that. Okay. I feel like once you've, once you've finished, once you've really taken stock of what's not, what's not working anymore, you're really rooting in and really pulling in that piece. And the piece to me, it's all about inner and outer peace. So it has to start from within first. And, and, but you need to go through this morning period where you really realize and, and you sort of close off that chapter, which to me at the end of the year happens to be that time of the year anyway. So it's like, you're perfectly aligned for this, but what this abundance really speaks to for me is the environment, your own energetic environment, which is going to be really key for you to actually attract what you want. And if you want to attract abundance, abundance can actually mean beyond the physical manifestation of wealth. It can mean fully provided for, right? Fully fulfilled, fully fertile, fully, you know, in, in all areas, it's fully rich in nutrients, it's nourishing, it's fulfilling, it's abundant in all areas. So really pay attention to that of how you can kind of cultivate that environment because that's sort of, if you focus on what is coming in and you really tap into truly what is it that you really want to pull towards you, then you're going to be really striving. And I think that this is going to be like the key to sort of like the filter as, I guess it's going to be like sort of like a filter to help you kind of create what it is that you really want. Okay, let's see what the tarot has to say in all of this. Okay, so we have the Six of Cups, the Four of Pentacles, the Wheel of Fortune, and the Three of Cups. So let's unpack and let's zoom you in. 
So with the six of cups, I feel like you're definitely like with all of this movement, all of this shuffling and really energy moving everywhere. I feel like a lot of that, you were really spending more of your time on just kind of planting a lot of seeds and really and really nourishing that. So I think that a lot of it had to do with really planting a lot of leads or if you're running your own business, I think that it was just a lot of like setting up the groundwork to make sure that the soil is fertile as they say. And I think that that part is now finished. And I think that right now we're really moving into, I guess where you might be currently is really just feeling stuck, but feeling stuck or feeling like you're trapped and really locking certain things in. You're really wanting to um, really solidify. I feel like this is this has more to do with, you know, Within your work, I feel like this has more to do with creating more security than anything else, where you really want to like lock certain things in, but then I think that with the death card, it's like certain aspects need to be left behind in order for this to happen. You know what I mean? And I also feel like you also need to kind of take a chance on you to pull a piece in. And what I mean by that is really just, it's almost like you need to kind of pivot or gain a different point of view essentially for you to really not focus solely on on the financial aspect of things within your career so it's sort of like why would you stay within a job only solely for the money if he, if it's making you miserable right or if it's actually not so much that's making you miserable but it's asking you to compromise core belief systems that you don't want to compromise on. That's what it is. And that's the part that doesn't really bring you peace. So make sure that you are, whatever direction that you're going in within your work, make sure that you place peace at a pedestal versus placing material things at a pedestal. Because if you do, then, then you're just going to be pulling in a different type of energy than what you have been up to this point. I think that there's definitely going to be a period of time where you really need to release all of that and really release the expectation that you need to kind of know what's kind of coming up like in the next phase of your life. But I also think that getting support is going to be key. Emotional support is going to be key and really keeping that vision alive of what does my next next phase of my career? What does my next phase of my development really look like? You know, if you can tap into that energetically and connect to it emotionally, you're going to be collecting people around you that are here to really truly support you. But the only way that that can really happen is almost like the, the center of this whole reading is this, is keep that peace of whatever your inner peace looks like and create the, envi the environment for you to attract abundance. So this is what we have going on with in your career and your personal development, let's move on to see what's happening within your relationships. All right, you guys, let's take a look at what's happening within your love and within your relationships. First of all, the crystal that I have chosen is a beautiful tourmaline piece. It's a rough piece. And to me, this immediately tells me that not only will you have to really create boundaries, but also there's going to be a lot of, um, transmuting, right? There's going to be a lot of um, kind of taking a look at almost like, almost like shape shifting, like taking a look at like really what is without attachment. And you're going to have to kind of navigate things in a more mindful way, because if you're going at it, just looking at it straight on what it actually is, um, then you're going to be missing certain elements that you really need to see within those relationships, right? Because I think that sometimes we're so quick to kind of judge the relationships that sort of come in, especially like if it's a business relationship or a connection, we're quick to dismiss that as just hardship versus actually trying to extract what it's trying to teach us. So let's take a look at what we are ready to leave behind in 2021 within your relationships. Is this lack of movement? It's stopping, but it's also how that actually makes you feel. It's almost like it, make, it makes you feel stuck, right? Or it's, it's pressing on the brakes continuously. And I think that you guys are really ready to let that go when you're just moving, either you're moving at a snail's pace or you're really, 
kind of blocking certain aspects within the relationship so that it doesn't open up as much as you would as much as you would like to okay there was my lights okay so i feel okay we're back you guys so <laughs> sorry my lights totally died I feel like what you are leaving behind essentially is this idea of just kind of like, almost like you're taking it slow or you're going at a snail's pace or I feel like you're just going to be um, taking on a different speed. But also I think that this lack of movement essentially kind of made you guys feel like you know, you're, you're hitting roadblocks everywhere within certain relationships. Like, it's almost like you wanted to create momentum, but it was just really not moving anywhere because it was just not, you didn't really see progress. That's what it is. Okay, let's see what you're currently in right now. Currently, the energy that you're, that most of you guys are attracting is the energy of trust, the deep inner trust. I think that a lot of you are like really looking inside and inwards for answers. I well, obviously if you are here, then you know. I think that there's a lot more to it than that. I think that you are connecting back to heart center. I think that you are, you are really asking and reflecting on sort of taking stock of how are the relationships within your life? How are the intimate relationships? If you are in an intimate relationship with anyone, it's sort of like, how can you fine tune it so that it really becomes more fulfilling? It really progresses you towards where you want to go, right? And I think that that's the part that's going to be the key to helping you kind of move forward, right? Because I think that it's almost like, I feel like a lot of you are sort of asking yourself or if, if you are reflecting, I think that when it comes right down to it is to understand that if you want to attract a better partner, you need to be a better partner, right? So it's sort of like you're really starting to trust that whole process of you kind of attract what you kind of give out energetically and it's actually showing and what's coming towards you is love because you're following that pathway and you are you are pulling true love true fulfillment essentially towards you so some of you guys are going to be really finding that not necessarily with other people but i think within with you i think that is definitely taking you on this journey of really trusting yourself and really accepting and loving yourself as you are. And through that, you will be able to, if you're not in a relationship, you will be able to attract the type of relationship that is a little bit more fulfilling. If you are in a relationship, then it will just deepen that connection. And the reason why, or I guess why this is all unfolding for you is because I think that you're you're kind of going through, you guys are going through a form of detox when you see like what happens when you're in toxic relationships and that's no longer working for you. And I think that through reflection and through kind of taking stuff of what was working and what is not working, you're kind of realizing that that's not really the way for you to really, it's almost like the more you focus on complaining, the more complaining you're going to be attracting, right? So like to me, this is just, it, it's common sense, but at the same time, sometimes when you're in there emotionally and you're so deeply invested, it's so, so difficult to see why certain things are not working and it's easy to kind of bring it back to ourselves and say, well, there's something wrong with us. And it's like, yeah, the part that is wrong with us essentially is that we need to learn to pivot so that we can really start attracting the type of relationships that are actually fulfilling for us. And sometimes we need to pay attention to the environment all around us. And if you're looking at all of the different relationships and all of the different connections that you have all around you, you're really going to see that it's like all of these micro choices, they affect everything. So if you have tourmaline, obviously working with crystals is going to be very key. Doing a lot of journaling, go, um, doing a lot more personal development is going to be key. And then really practicing them with yourself first and then with other people second. 
And then how or like what can kind of help in this process is again, and look at that, trust. But trust in this case is to know that when you nurture something, it has the ability to grow. And I think that this is very much really looking like within your love life, within your relationship, it's very much looking like we're really pushing and sending you towards really self-love and self-acceptance and not in a... I don't mean that in a really superficial way. I mean that in a little way when you're really taking stock, taking a mindful moment to really take a look at, okay, what does my soul need? What environment do I actually thrive in? Who are the people that I'm actually inspired by? Okay, let's create that environment. You know what I mean? Having the deep trust and knowing that that's what you're kind of, you're cultivating that with a lot of consistency and a lot of micro decisions is going to be key to kind of help you guys along for 2022. Let's see what the tarot has to say. Okay, so we have the Three of Wands, the Page of Pentacles, the Six of Swords, and the Nine of Wands. So let's unpack. So I feel like when we're looking at when we're looking at this stop sign, when we're looking at what we're really leaving behind, um, it lines up completely with the three of wands. When we're just sort of looking out the window and somehow, and it's like we were playing this comparison game. Like you could have like the most amazing, abundant relationship, the most loving partner. You might have the most loving friends, the most supportive friends and all of the things that you ever wanted to manifest and still, still kind of look out the window that others have it better and that somehow you're being shortchanged. And I think that that's the part that, that's the part that you really need to detox from, right? That's the part that you really need to kind of almost like cleanse from completely. And sometimes we cleanse with less, not with more, right? And I also think that looking at truly looking at like, okay, in what way do I really, really want to cultivate like this amazing relationship? In what way, how can I, how can I really energetically be, and isn't that funny, they're both blue. Um, how can I energetically attract all of that that is actually fulfilling for me, right? And I mean, I think that the other part of it is to just kind of letting, Leaving certain things behind, leaving certain certain wounds behind is going to be key to returning back to. I think that this is going to be like a huge healing journey for most of you. And I think that especially maybe it's through the pandemic, maybe it's through just simply like taking some, some reflection and some stock of like, how are things going within your relationship? that sort of has helped you give you some guidance and some insight. And then when you're looking at also trusting that creating momentum and, and moving forward, it's like you're, you're taking, you're taking steps towards that each and every single day. You're, you're moving towards that, the dream life. You're moving towards that dream, the dream job, the dream relationship every single day, it's like sort of like the full picture comes one picture at the time, right? But it also, it comes with one micro step every single day when you're just making one right decision each and every single day. And it, it accumulates to something so beautiful overall. So this is all I have for you guys for your love and your relationship when it comes to looking ahead in 2022. Let's hop on over to overall on what you guys are manifesting. Okay, friends, last but not least, let's take a look at overall what it is that you're manifesting. What is your overall energy, overall arching energy for the year for 2022? First of all, take a look at your crystal. I believe that this is a strawberry quartz. Again, I will just pop the name on the screen. Super beautiful, which I mean, I would say that this would be the perfect perfect crystal for manifestation. I also would like to add that the overall energy that I'm feeling without really tapping into the media, without really tapping into anywhere else, Overall, I feel like we're all on a cusp of transformation and not just because we're gaining more insight and you're gaining more, more, 
I guess we're gaining more insight into and reflecting essentially of what our last between two to five years have really looked like. I think that beyond just taking a look at that and really being mindful of, okay, what is that future look like that we would really like to cultivate? I think that a lot of you guys are really starting to tap into your own power essentially when you really understand like, I am that creator and I can create a different reality if I choose to. And I think that this is so beautiful because it's just, it's, it's just moving you along that beautiful journey where you can evolve and change, right? Okay, let's take a look at overall, what are you guys manifesting for the year 2022? And what, is it, what are you leaving behind first and foremost? So we have success. And I think that what we're leaving behind here, sometimes people think, oh my gosh, like I'm leaving behind success. I don't want that. Are you joking right now? And it's like, no, I think that sometimes we tend to think of success as the ultimate right? Sometimes we confuse what success really means. And sometimes we don't even know what success means because we never really took the time to define it. So I think that that's the part that we're really leaving behind. That superficial idea of what success is. That's the part that we're leaving behind that no longer needs to be here because it's just, it, it's no longer fitting what we're really after. What we're really after is balance and prosperity. We're after success, but not in a superficial way, right? That's the part that really needs to be let go of. And what is here right now is a form of protection. I think that we're really creating the energy or we're really manifesting the energy of protection, whether that's protection or, or boundaries. To me, protection is all about boundaries, about really protecting your own inner energy, protecting your intellect, protecting but just protecting your health, protecting your mind, your mindset, the way that you speak to people, all of those things are all about protection for me. They're all about really protecting it. So when I think of it like you're creating like the safety cocoon that is really here to hold you, even if everything else around you is falling apart. That's the part that I'm talking about when it comes to protection. And that's the part that's going to be really key to move you into 2022. What is coming in for 2022? I think that what's coming in is passion, but how do we get to passion? How do we let go of success and how do we get to passion? You get success through passion. It's when, when you understand that in order for you, in order for you to truly feel fulfilled, it doesn't come through stuff. It doesn't come through a thousand Amazon orders. It doesn't come through, you know, wearing five masks. It doesn't come through, you know, having a million dollar mansion. That's not it. Although those things are nice, although the cloth mask is fun. I have to say it has to come all of these things that we truly desire. It has to come from within. And when you ignite that flame, oh my gosh, it's amazing. When you ignite that flame and you're in that zone, it's like you're fire, like nothing can stop you. And for each of you, it's going to be something different, but I think that it's going to be very, very, very key in 2022 for you to figure out how do I tap into that? How do I create the perfect environment for me to figure out what my true passion is. What am I actually passionate about? What am I actually caring about? What actually makes a difference in my life versus what is something that I was conditioned to think that I should care about? And it's not to say that you need to be ignorant about everything that's around you, but it's definitely shifting in a direction where you ignite the things that actually light you up, that you need to place that as at the forefront of whatever you are focused on. And the reason why I say that is because sometimes we think that the most important thing is make sure that you're secure and make sure that you have base security. But the thing is that if you're looking to thrive, See, I'm not here to tell you how to survive 2022. I'm here to tell you how to thrive in 2022. How can you tab into that and manifest the absolute best year of your life? Because the thing is that the world has been ending for all of this time and it's up to you. How will you create and cultivate that environment where you can actually thrive in that? 
And I mean, really, like how can we do that, right? And then why, why are we so focused on passion? It's because we have been so scienced out and we've been so stuck in our head that we forgot that success isn't the ultimate. We are the ultimate creator. It's not, it's not the materialistic things. Those things are great and they just literally just, they help you, guide you along, but it's literally like, money is just a tool just like anything else. So you can kind of place it on a pedestal or you can literally like tap into its energy and use it to cultivate it and work with it, right? But that's up to you of how you do that. And getting out of our heads and really tapping into heart center, tapping into truly what ignites our soul on fire, that's going to be key. And that might mean new beginnings for some of you. That might mean that you're completely shifting gears into it's like, what is, again, what is that filter that we're putting on, right? What is that filter that you're putting on that will actually help you get out of your head and get into what lights you up? And let's see what the tarot has to say. Okay, so we have the Queen of Pentacles, we have the Seven of Swords, the Two of Swords, and the Knight of Wands. So let's see. So this idea of success and it's almost like, it's almost like you felt like you needed, you needed to have it all in order for you to be happy. That's the idea that we're really leaving behind in 2021. This idea that you needed to make a lot of money, you needed to have a successful career, you needed to have like all of those things on your to-do list in order for you to be happy and balanced. That's the part that we're going to be leaving behind. And I think also for some of you, you're really feeling like I bought the thing and yet I'm still unfulfilled. I'm still, I'm still struggling. I'm still like, I still have anxiety at night. I'm still wondering why did I do the thing and not actually went for something that actually matters for me. You know, I think that it's just like doing things mindlessly, I think is the idea that we're kind of letting go of for 2021. I think that most of us really realize that the, that ultimately most of us don't have proper coping tools essentially to kind of help us. And we've tried the superficial tools and unfortunately they're not, they're not long lasting and they're not helping us. So what is here right now is you're sort of gathering all of these things, but then you're also seeing like, okay, you know what? I'm letting that go. I'm letting, I'm letting these things that have just been weighing on me and really making me feel like, okay, which crappy thing am I going to be pick up next? Which thing is going to be the thing that's actually going to help me? And honestly, getting into arguments with people, um, arguing with them online or getting into, or trying to convince others that I'm right and you're wrong, that's not really, that's not really helping me right now. That's not really making me feel more safe, making me feel more secure. And honestly, it's just, it's kind of a waste of time. And I think that most of you are really realizing that perhaps over this holiday season or perhaps over the past like three, four months that you're really realizing that, okay, like the way that we've been doing things is not really working anymore. And then you're kind of here at the crossroads of, okay, do I follow my passion or do I follow what everybody else is doing? And I think that this is where the, the advice that spirit is giving us is to just getting out of our head is going to be so key. We need to learn how to take the blindfolds off and really reconnect because I feel like if you're only looking through this lens, if this is all you're seeing, then that's all you're ever going to see, right? We need to remove this so that you can see the full picture. Because when you're looking at the full picture, it ain't that bad, right? But also, it's fresh beginnings. And fresh beginnings don't necessarily just mean it's a new year, but a fresh beginnings to me, it also means a fresh mindset and a fresh direction. It means really understanding that you need to kind of be willing to shape shift, be willing to release what is not working anymore, so that you can welcome what is here and what is really here to support you. And when you do that, oh my goodness, look at the, the momentum can catapult you. It really absolutely will catapult you into 
into something that you actually want, but that will be fueled by, like it's gonna be your passion that will fuel this. It's not going to be your boss's fantastic idea. It's not going to be whatever your grandma was expecting you to do 20 years ago. It's not gonna be any of those things. It's literally going to be fueled by your own intellect and your own passion. So connect back to that. Do all of the practices that will help you realign your energy with that because it's going to be key. This is all I have for you guys. Um, let's meet up at the very end. And I wanted to pull a couple of, what did I wanna give you guys? A couple of self-care cards that I think will help you in setting the energy right for 2022. So a little bit of a different vibe than what we've been kind of working with for uh, your standard pickup card. I wanted to do something different for New Year's and for closing of this year. First of all, I wanted to thank you for all of your support throughout 2021. I so appreciate you. For self-care, I'm going to be using the self-care wisdom card. It's one of my brand new ones, courtesy of Santa that hooked me up for this year. Let's see what is coming up for you guys, for the collective, for 2022, for self-care. What can you guys use as a collective? that I think will be helpful. Hmm. Power. Power as in you have to give up this idea that you need to fit in in order for you to be happy. And the ability to suck it up is not a superpower. Saying no is. So own your power. Be unapologetic about what you want and start manifesting you guys. This is all I have for you. I hope that you guys have enjoyed this video. If you did, you can give me a thumbs up. You can also subscribe to the channel if you have not yet already. And thank you so much for watching you guys. And I cannot wait to see you in my next one.